Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and today I'm here to show you how I made my first set of cards using the July 2022 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, see the process, and get a few tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Yesterday, I shared with you a look at the newest sheet load of cards, July 2022, showed you my first set, and told you how you can download the printable for free. And guess what? My wonderful team of collaborators is also joining me today. You can see their videos here on YouTube by clicking on the hashtag in the title. That will bring them all up for you. And then I also have a link to the Instagram tag in the description box below so you can go see what my Instagram team has created. I do have a couple new team members this month who I will officially be welcoming and introducing you to later on in the month. But let me know in that description box below if you notice the two new faces to the team. If you haven't yet seen yesterday's video and downloaded and or printed your sheet load of cards, I have the debut video linked in that description box below. But if you have already downloaded it or printed it out, I hope you'll follow along with me as we create cards today. You can always pause and rewind as much as you need. Now, as I start the process, if I do leave you with any questions, don't forget you can leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Now, before we get started on the process, why don't we take a look at the main supplies that I'll be using today. The sheet load itself calls for three 12 by 12 pattern papers, three solid color card stocks for matting and your oval here, and then six solid card stocks to cut and fold in half for your 12 card bases. Yes, this month you will be yielding 12 cards. So this is a great one to build up that stash or make those cards for donating or giving to friends and family. For my focal point, instead of stamping onto an oval, I will actually be die cutting the word hello out of this tranquil teal cardstock, which I thought matched these flowers nicely in the pattern paper. And then to help it stand out from those pattern papers, I'm gonna be using some nesting oval dies from Spellbinders as a backer for that. For my card bases and mats, I'm just using standard heavyweight white cardstock. I do already keep some card bases cut and folded, so I'm all ready to go when I want to make a sheet load, but I will show you later how to cut the mats. Now for my pattern papers, which are kind of like the star of the show today, I chose these three pieces from Minte's happy place line you know i just love their papers and i love a good floral and wood grain together i decided to add on as my third piece the pink and white gingham i cannot wait to create these with you and show you the end result let's get crafty I'm going to get started today by cutting my 12 by 12 pattern papers. I will first be cutting this into three strips, two that are four inches tall and one that is three inches tall. Now you will want to make sure that you know what the top of your paper is if you have one. And then I rotated mine to the right and I just started cutting from the top four inches, four inches and three inches. Then I'm going to cut each of those strips in to their finished sizes. The top two get cut to five and a quarter inches wide to yield four. And then on the bottom, that last strip, I'm going to cut in four pieces that are three inches wide. You will notice as I am cutting down to the final sizes that I am left with some pattern paper strips. I will actually be showing you later how I use those to decorate the insides. 
On that bottom piece, because I will need the full 12 inches, I do not do what I call a generous cut. Normally when I cut, I will cut to the far side of the mark, but if I do that, I might wind up with a fourth piece that's a little bit smaller than three inches. So I did cut these to the left of the three inch mark on my trimmer, and then at the end, I had those four three inch squares. Later, I will show you how to cut these three inch squares in half per the instructions on the cutting guide sheet. For now, I finished cutting the other two pattern papers exactly as I just showed you. Once I have my pattern papers cut down, I bring in two pieces of white cardstock to cut down per the CS1 instructions. Now do note that you'll be cutting these to 3.375 inch squares, which is also three and three eighths. I do have a note there, but I want to show you that three and three eighths is the mark that is halfway between three and a quarter and three and a half. I start by cutting each of the white cardstocks into three and three eighths inch strips. Now this does leave me some leftovers, but I always just keep these in my white cardstock scrap bin and use those later. These would also be good if you want to make your oval a little bit smaller for your sentiment. Now once those three and three eighths inch strips are done, then I cut these down to the final square size and I just keep cutting until I have 12 total squares. The supply list calls for six pieces of cardstock to be cut and folded for card bases. Now I always keep some handy that I pre-make, but I do want to show you how to do this. All you'll do is cut your piece of cardstock in half at five and a half inches wide, and this next step is optional. I am going to score these at four and a quarter before I go ahead and fold in half. But those are just quick, easy card bases. You could also do a top fold where you cut it to four and a quarter inches wide. That is always up to you. The sketch calls for some triangle pieces, and now I'm going to show you how to easily cut down those square pattern papers to get those triangles. You will notice on the cutting guide that it does show an additional cut for those. I always make sure that my pattern papers, I have them with the top at the top of my trimmer. That way when I go to cut the first one, I rotate it counterclockwise to the left. Now on my trimmer, I can always see where it's gonna cut because that blade starts to make a mark. And what I do is I line up each of those corners to get as close as I can to that cut line. When I have them lined up, I hold my paper down and then make that slice to get those two triangles. Easy peasy. Now if your cutter doesn't have a line kind of like mine does or a groove, you could always take some long scissors and just cut corner to corner. You shouldn't go out and buy any fancy tools for this, just use what you have. Now I did show you here how I cut one of each pattern slowly, but now as I speed up this cutting process a little bit, I do have a special kind of shout out or announcement. I recently had some channel members hit one year of membership and I just want to recognize them here up on screen. Thank you so much to all of you for your support over this past year. It is greatly appreciated. You keep me crafting here on YouTube and keep Sheetload free for all.
for my focal point, instead of stamping onto that oval, I will be using this Hello die with some Tranquil Teal cardstock. And for my ovals, instead of using a full sheet of cardstock, I'm going to be using some of the scraps that I have here in my little box. Now off screen, I realized that I wanted to add a little texture or something to these white ovals. So I did a test here of plain white cardstock and one with a little wood grain texture and I did decide that I wanted to add that wood grain to each of these pieces. So I brought in this embossing folder which I got this one at Hobby Lobby, it's Paper Studio, and I just added that fun texture to each of those ovals. Then when those were all cut, I brought in my art glitter glue so I could put that on the back of my Hello die and get in all those nooks and crannies. And I placed this centered onto the white embossed ovals. Now some of the glue did kind of spurt out on the back so I just wiped that off with my fingers. But after I pressed it down with that stamp block, I set these off to the side to dry and I just kept gluing until I had all 12 of those done. Before I moved on, I did let these dry completely for about five minutes. Now I'm gonna put together the card kits or the pattern paper pieces that go on each of them. I'm gonna start with the floral and for the top left triangle, I chose the wood grain and for the bottom right, I chose the paint gingham. To help those triangles stand out from that floral paper, they will be matted with one of those white cardstock squares. Now for the next one, instead of having the wood grain in the upper left, I'm actually gonna skip that, have the pink gingham be in the upper left, and the wood grain be the lower right. Now you can make all four of your cards look the same because there are four with that floral background, or you can switch it up like I did here. Now I'm just going to keep choosing my backgrounds and my triangles for each of my card bases. You'll just want to make sure that no matter how you put these together, that each of the pieces are a different pattern from the paper. I start putting the cards together in kind of an assembly line order. I started by adding the triangles to each of the white cardstock mats. Now normally, you know me, I love to use the ATG, but because of those small little corners on the triangle, I'm going to be using art glitter glue so I can get those adhered down nicely. Once I have the glue on the back, I went ahead and I put this on the lower right and you can always bring in your printable to see how much of a border you should have. It's an eighth of an inch and if you do the borders even around the outside, the border in the middle between the two pattern papers should also be that same distance. But don't forget, if yours is not perfect, this is okay. These cards are handmade. Just do your best. I continued adding those triangle pieces to their white cardstock mats until I had all 12 done and then it was time to move on to the next step in the process which was to add these matted pieces to that background pattern paper. To do that, I did bring in my ATG, but you'll see here that it ran out of adhesive on me pretty quickly. So once I got that switched over, I just added adhesive to the back of each square and then placed these to the left side of the pattern paper. I did try my best to get an even border on the top, bottom, and left, but you could also move this piece wherever you like. You could move it to the right. You could turn your card so it was portrait. You could center that square in your card piece. Sheet load is a great jumping off point and you can always make these cards your own. Once I had all the squares in place, I brought in my card bases and started adding the pattern papers to the front. To do this, I just put adhesive on the back and then I centered it as best as I could on the card front, leaving just a nice white border around the edge. Once again, this was just an assembly line process until all 12 cards were done. 
Now it's time to add those focal points. This is going to be another one of those places where you can move it around to what fits your cards best. For me, I am sticking pretty much to the sketch. Now I do want to leave my cards pretty flat for easy mailing, so I just adhere these down once again with my ATG. Now you can definitely add this with some foam tape. You could have added the square or the triangle pieces with some foam tape. However much dimension or texture you want to add is always a great idea. You know that I love to add a little bling to my cards and to keep these nice and flat, I decided to go with my Elizabeth Craft Designs glitter dots. You get this whole sheet of stickers for just a little bit of money and they're nice and flat. Now the ones I'm using have a silver border and then a clear glittery inside. There's various sizes so you'll see here I am placing different sizes. Sometimes I do kind of just a triangle with single dots around the hello. And then here on this next one, you'll see that I put a couple dots in each of those same areas. I kept adding the bling until all 12 cards had a little sparkle. Up on screen now are the finished cards and what was left of those three 12 by 12 pattern papers. Using my trimmer and that punch I just showed you, I ended up decorating the inside with a little pattern paper strip at the bottom and two of those fishtails. Now I put the fishtails over on the lower right because on the front, most of the weight on the card was to the left. All 12 cards were now finished and here are some close up looks. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together my first set of cards using the July 2022 sheet load. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to check out what my collaborators have created. You can visit all of their YouTube videos by clicking on that hashtag in the title. And to see what my Instagram team has created, make sure to click on that link in the description box. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.